probably have a few engines in your garage that look like this. Today we'll diagnose a small engine and find out what makes these small projects so easy to learn from. Hey, I think I'll grow into this in a few years. That bike is you, man. Hey, welcome to Truck You. I'm Bruno Mass. And I'm Matt Steele. Now, as you guys know at home, as well as we do, people neglect their everyday drivers all too often, whether it be a car or a truck. If you do your, some simple maintenance on these vehicles, they can last hundreds of thousands of miles, but that's usually not the case. You know, the same holds true for all the toys that we've got in the world today, too. I mean, you think about it. Just looking around here, we've got this state-of-the-art 1976 <laughs> open-wheel racer. Little tiny motorcycles, four-wheelers, dune buggies, snowmobiles, Boats, the list goes on and on and on, and they're a lot of fun, but you've got to take care of them or you can have the same problems. And oftentimes we neglect those even more because we're not using them every day. Yeah, the, the, what happens is when you don't maintain them the time you go to play with them, they, they seize up and you have a problem. Well, the case in point here is from that custom cart, we got ourselves a custom 1970s looking motor and the right. owner probably told us he doesn't ever remember putting oil in it. So we seem to uh, have a bit of a problem. We tried to do a visual inspection. And Visually, that's bad. <laughs> so what we're going to do is start to pull this engine apart and find out what went wrong inside and show you guys what happens when you don't take care of your small engines. You drain the oil out of this thing? The auto draining function might have been one of the problems. Normally there'd be a hot mess right now of oil everywhere as you take this cover off. Hold on. There we go. Right. That was a little bit tricky. Now take a look at that. <laughs> wow, right. that doesn't look good. There was some cooking going on right there and right there. And that's why it was sticking so bad. Yeah, you've got a great deal of aluminum transfer on the steel crankshaft. And usually that's a sign that there's been a starvation of oil inside the engine. This is not good. I mean, you want everything to turn nice and free. You want it to be well lubricated. And this is just the opposite of that. Now, actually, there are two oil fills right there. <laughs> Apparently, he didn't find either one of those. And down in here is the oil sling. And you take a look. Now, that's the oil level that it was at, which is why we have all these problems. But look, so that oil sling it spins around on the crank and throws the oil all over the place. Well, if there's no, the sling isn't getting any oil. Oil, it's not slinging any oil and there's the problem. Now another thing you'll see with an aluminum motor like this, either a big one or a little one, it could be in your street car, the same type of scenario happens is when it's starved of oil on an aluminum engine you have a lot more problems because of the distortion that goes on inside of it. Right. Heat is the enemy with these small engines or an aluminum engine in your street car so it's even more critical to keep it lubricated properly. Properly lubricating it will keep the bore circular, it won't let it get egg shaped. In this scenario here you've got a situation where you can possibly stick the rings or stick the piston. This one's scored up so bad that it's really unsalvageable, and especially when you talk about aluminum engine. At this point, once it gets scored, once it gets damaged or egged, you just need to trash it and start over. Yeah, this goes in the junk pile, but it's still fun to tear it apart. You know, if we had some smaller hands, we might be able to get this job done a little easier. Clear. You don't even know your own strength. Perfect. Too much man for this thing. <laughs> now these are the internal components right there. Take a look at that. Very nice, huh? Yeah, I'd say that there was some, some issues going on here, definitely. Well, listen, not oiling that thing for years was a big issue, and this is the result with all of this. I mean, that's all scored up pretty good. So you want to go shopping? You know, yeah, the, my favorite thing about these little engines is that they're really inexpensive. So you know what, I think I'm going to go down to the store and pick up a new one. Bruno loves to spend money, so that's good. All right, and you mentioned wanting some little hands, right? I think we need some expert technical advice, and I know just who to call. Sounds good, man. As soon as I clean up.
As you can see, we got a lot going on here. We do have a lot going on in here, don't we guys? Hey, welcome back to Truck U. Today we've got the kids in here and I'll tell you, it's kind of nice to actually have some dependable help in the shop. Now this is my son Colton and this is his buddy Casey. And as you can see today, we're working on this little buggy and this is awesome. Colton, what are you doing down there, man? Fixing a tire. Fixing the tire. All right, you're doing, can you get it? Look at that, nicely done. Slide it right on there, boy. Oh, perfect, perfect. Now throw that washer on and tighten that baby down. Now this is the shark buggy from the guys at Hammerhead. And these are awesome little rides. We actually got one for Colton when he was about three years old, which might've been a tad aggressive. You all right there, don't, don't fall. <laughs> so, but the bottom line is he's become a phenomenal driver and he's learned a lot about these things. And what's cool with Colton and Casey working on this, they can learn so much about it. Casey, what's going on with you, man? Um, I'm fixing the wheel. You the got the steering wheel? Steering wheel. Where, you got it all on there, don't you? These kids are getting ahead of me. This is awesome because there are a lot of similarities between this and a full-size street vehicle. And it's so much fun to get the kids in here working with us because think of the things that they're learning, all the similarities about the steering, which is perfect. So now he knows about that, the suspension. I mean, there's everything from the pedals to throttle linkage, just to learn and to drive and everything. And the biggest lesson of today, the importance of keeping oil in the engine, right? We learned a lot about that. So this is cool. Now, when you order one of these things from the Hammerhead Company, they ship to you pretty much like this. Really, all you have to do is tighten a few things, put the steering wheel on, and then the roll cage is next. You good? Colton, you got it tight? Yeah? Man, that's on there pretty good. All right, steering wheel pretty good. We'll button that up. And the next thing, you know what, guys? Can you help me with the roll cages? Yes. Cool. All right, well, help me get this thing. It's kind of heavy. Can you guys put it on? Yes. I'll get this side, you get that side. Like put that one there and put that one there and then like up and down, up and down. I'm done. Roll cage is in place. Why don't you guys sit down in there? Let's get a look at how you guys are gonna look riding this thing. Oh yes. This looks awesome. All right guys, we'll tighten everything up. Then we can take you guys outside, huh? You can start having some fun? Cool, all right. Here's this week's spark plug tip, brought to you by Champion Spark Plug. Every engine needs quality spark plugs to help ensure maximum power, performance, and reliability. Even the engines that power your weekend activities, including your jet ski, boat, or ATV. When picking new plugs for these engines, there are two key considerations. The spark plug's resistor design and the anti-fouling characteristics. Take, for example, this Champion Marine spark plug from Federal Mogul. This plug features a Q-type resistor design that eliminates interference with the engine and other electronic controls on the boat, such as a radio, GPS, and fish finder. This Champion Power Sport plug also minimizes the potential risk of plug failure and fouling with increased bore clearance between the shell and core nose. Pick up the plugs that will keep you running for any adventure. Let's go inside the Dupla Color garage. Dupla Color. If it's out there, it's in here. Today in the Duplicolor Garage, it's all about finding the perfect match to your vehicle's factory paint. The Duplicolor Perfect Match Aerosol is not only for fixing big blemishes and problem areas in your paint, but it's also for dressing up your vehicle as well. A lot of guys are really coordinating different elements of the vehicle from the wheels, the running boards, and the mirrors, and they're matching that up to the factory paint. And that's what we're going to do today with this wheel. Now we're going to paint elements of this black that'll match the paint on the truck. Sort of like we're matching up the shoes and the shirt, if you will. So when we're scuffing this, all we're doing is knocking down the finish of the chrome a little bit, and that makes the surface a lot better for the paint to stick to. We gave the paint about 15 or 20 minutes to dry. Now we're ready to throw on the Perfect Match Clear Coat, and that's gonna do a couple of different things. One, it's gonna give it a nice factory finish. It's gonna give it a nice glossy finish as well, and it's gonna protect it from road grime and the elements that this is gonna be subjected to out on the road. Now keep in mind, the most important thing that we did was we got the factory paint coat off of the sticker right there in the door jam. If you have any more questions about this or any other Duplicolor products, be sure to check out their website. 
Welcome back to Truck U. Now that's always a blast working with the kids, but those of you that are parents, you fully understand these kids are going crazy now. They're ready to go outside. They've been cooped up for a while. They're ready to play, so we need to get this stuff together, man. Now, as you can see, we've got the new motor here, and it's a little bit of an upgrade of the one we took out. First of all, this one's going to run. That's a good thing. Right. Dude, it's got a half <laughs> horsepower more than the one we took out. Now, that when you're thinking half horsepower, what is that? Well, the first one was only five. This is five and a half. So you're right. thinking about, what, about a 10%? 10%. Yeah, that's not too bad. So hopefully, he'll feel it underneath his foot when he steps down on the gas pedal. Also, we want an upgraded clutch here, and I think you'll notice a difference as well because but, Matt's got some horror stories about this, that. This is a good idea. I know you've been ragging on me about this, but, you know, Colton's had one of those buggies for a couple of years now. And when he was first learning how to drive, I mean, it was a natural tendency for the kid to put one foot on the brake, one foot on the gas, push them both down as hard as you can. The motor's revving up. It's not going anywhere. He's laughing. I'm over there pulling my hair out going, you can't do that because the clutch is burning down to the ground. You know, so finally I get him taught, okay, the same foot does the gas, and you pull it off, and then you hit the brake with that. Well, once he learns that, and he becomes a pretty good driver, now his friends want to drive the buggy, and they're burning the clutches down. So more stress in my life. This is made specifically to deal with the heat. So this I is going to put that didn't even affect you. I listen, there's been a little bit of counseling involved, but I'm okay now. I'm on like step 11, but this is definitely going to help. Now what it is, it's a centrifugal clutch, and I want to show you guys, it's pretty neat how these things work if you've never seen it before. Now this is going to act as kind of like our pressure plate for our clutch. So what you've got is basically a set of weights held together by some springs. So it rides right on your crankshaft, It'll go inside like this and spin freely when the motor idles, so nothing's being engaged. But as centrifugal force kicks in when you start to get into the throttle and the motor revs faster, these weights, you can see them here, they'll move back and forth, they'll actually expand out. When they expand out, they'll grab this plate and lock it up. And when it locks it up, it'll actually drive the rear wheels on the back of these teeth of the gear. So it's a pretty neat deal. You lift off the throttle, the weights suck back down in, and it free wheels. This is a cool clutch, too, because it's upgradable. You can actually change these springs out there and, and, and make them a little bit different and set them up a little bit right. more custom. So as the if it's a kid driving it, you know, as the kid grows and changes driving experience, you can change the clutch right along with them. Oh, one thing I want to show you guys, you, there is a right and wrong way to put it on. Obviously, you've got a key and that'll slide here on the crankshaft, but you want to make sure that it sits down inside the, uh, the outer ring like this. If you have it the other way, it'll actually come out halfway and the clutch won't lock up. Yep. It'll slip all the time and it'll burn it up. So that goes on like that. There we go. I could have used two dozen of these. <laughs> Hey Matt, I forgot to tell you, my favorite feature of this engine is the fact that it comes with an oil alert. <laughs> so it's almost idiot proof. You know, this way if you can't find the, the fill on either side of the engine, yeah. he's going to be covered. You know, we ought to give him some detailed step-by-step -step instructions too, maybe. But of course, you know, I say this and that guy's keeping us in business. So how bad is that? Right, right. right. Yeah, I don't want to make too much fun of him. Yeah, the detailed instructions, fill with oil. Regu yes. Check regularly. All right. So you good? Yeah, I think we should be good right there. Let me put the plug back in. We can get this over there in place, put some gas in it, and fire this baby up. Go ahead. You do the heavy lifting this All time. Right. Yeah, how come? I feel like I'm always doing that. Let's get this. <laughs> That's funny. Get that in there. Now we can wrap that chain around on the clutch. Go ahead. All right? Yep. And we'll just use that old motor mount. Holes are there, and we're good. Before we go any further, we need to make sure that everything lines up. And I've got the motor kicked over to the side as far as I can. So if you look back here at the chain, yeah, you see where it hooks. Good. Yeah, the top to the bottom sprocket right there, that chain's kicked way out to the side and that's not gonna work or work for long anyway. No, you can feel it's already putting a load on and that's not a good thing just turning it by hand. So what you're gonna probably end up doing is you'll break this sprocket either the top or the bottom and you run the risk of actually breaking the, or damaging the end of the crank, which is gonna damage the entire engine. And for what you've got in it, then you've got to place the whole thing so we're starting over again. again. But, but there is a, some uh, light at the end of the tunnel here because it looks like the guy had previously offset this wheel with some makeshift spacers. I think if we remove one we might be okay. Here let's get this chain off. Right, hold on let me zip this first. Yeah? Yeah. All right. I got this tipped up about as far as I Look can. at you. You're the man. Nice. All right here we go. All right. Now, you called it, the makeshift spacers. He's got a triple stack of nuts right there, okay? So that's the deal. Now, if time was not such an issue, we would probably make some more appropriate spacers for that. But we gotta get this thing outside and keep those kids happy. <laughs> happy kids make happy adults. So in the interest of time, I think what we'll do is just get in here, pop one of these out, get it out of the way, move this in, and it should line up just about right. Yeah, I think that'll give us the right offset. Okay.
Now that Matt went ahead and changed our offset, I think we're going to be all right. That should line up perfectly <laughs> because I, I did I take it. your word for it? <laughs> you should, actually. All right. I did a visual inspection. It looks perfect, right? Love the visual inspection. All right, get that on there. Let me know when you're ready and I can tip this back. So, I, yeah, I just put the one spacer behind the sprocket and kicked it in about a quarter of an inch. And look at that. She's lined up perfect now. Yeah, that looks pretty good, exactly man. exactly what we want. Okay, now we can tighten down this engine and get that in place, and we're good. All right, so we've got everything lined up. Our sprockets are in line, the chain's on, engine's tightened down. Put fuel in it, wheels tightened down. Now it's just time to uh, pull away, baby. Ignition on, fuel on, choke on. You ready? Yep. Oh, you got the magic touch. That I do. All right, now let's take a look at this. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll bring in RPMs up a little bit. Now we'll watch that clutch work. There we go. See that? Then boom. Like you said, now the weights aren't doing anything. You're just idling. Right. And you're off. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It looks like that sprocket's got a little bend in it. That's like anything else, though. You bring in one thing and you got 10 other things to fix. Hey, this is running, though. I think it's time we can get the kids. Let's go play. Welcome back to Truck U. Now we know a lot of you guys are running big diesel trucks and one of the issues you can have with them is an injector failure. And, and heaven forbid you gotta replace them. Yeah, it's gonna cost you thousands of dollars. Easily. Well, this is Hot Shot Secret and this is the only product on the market that is actually specifically designed for those injector problems. Now when you talk about like a power stroke diesel, a lot of people don't understand that those injectors inside of it are hydraulically driven. They've got motor oil actually forcing the piston inside the injector up and down there's a lot of pressure there the problem is is you can put in a fuel additive thinking that's going to solve your problem well it doesn't work because inside of there what happens is that oil cokes up or you get stiction is what it's called when that injector freezes up inside of the spring or piston won't move it won't allow you to get adequate fuel flow out of that injector the result is you're gonna have hard starts you're gonna have a loss of power the motor will run imbalanced you pour this in and it'll free up that stiction and let the injector flow freely again now here's the best part nine times out of 10, just adding the hot shot secret is going to clear that injector and get it running good as new. Now, if you are one of the, uh, the other guy out that's got a broken spring in there or something like that, and it's a bigger problem, these guys are going to give you the money back. So you absolutely have nothing to lose. Now, it's also preventative. So let's say you've fixed the problem. Now, about every fourth oil change, you add this in there, and it's going to prevent that problem from happening again down the road, and you're going to sleep better at night. It's hot shot secret. Put it in your diesels, man. Keep that baby run it. I'll tell you what, these little things have really grown on me over the last couple of years. They look great. It's the Eurotail lens kits from LMC Truck, and it's a direct replacement for your stock lenses in your vehicle. You put it in, nice clear lens covers right there, clear bulbs, they look awesome, and they're street legal in all 50 states, which is nice. Yeah, it is. You know, as you'd expect from LMC Truck, they've got a full line of Euro lens kits for your Chevy, your Dodge, your GMC, and Ford trucks, and if you haven't got one already, you need to check out their catalogs. They come free, they've got great pictures, expanded diagrams, and descriptions to make sure you get the parts you need right. for your truck, whether it's dating back to 1947, to 2008, LMC Truck has got the parts you need. There are a lot of people out there that love that old school classic sound of a glass pack muffler, and that's exactly what these are from Heartthrob Exhaust. Now these are high temp, 100% aluminized glass packs that you can see right here. They got louvered spiral cores and long stranded fiberglass. Now these come in all stainless steel. If you want to spend a few extra bucks, you can get these polished directly from Heartthrob Exhaust. Now you've got a high flow exhaust, you've got a lot of different sizes available, and you've got that old school powerful custom sound. That's what it's all about with the glass pack mufflers from Heartthrob Exhaust. Now, when we come back from break, we're gonna turn the kids loose and see what kind of damage they can do outside. <laughs> Wish us luck. <laughs> That'll be fun. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit our website at truckutv.com.
Welcome back to Truck U. Now today we got to have some fun. We got some help in the shop today that was much needed and a chance to tear apart one of these small engines. Show you guys what the inner workings look like. You know, it was so much fun working with the kids too and it's great to have them into the shop. But to be honest, they have been cooped up all day and they're starting to go a little bit crazy if you know what I mean. Are you guys ready to get outside? Yeah. I know I'm ready too because you know how it is. Crazy kids make crazy adults. All right, guys, let's get you dressed. Let's get the toys outside and let's get crazy. All right. As far as I'm concerned, just another day at the shop. <laughs> That's right. Crazy in a safe way. All right. See, there's the dad part. Uh-huh. I'll be honest with you, it's been a long time since I've been on a buggy like this. This thing was moving. Man. I told you that extra half horsepower is going to make all the difference. You didn't listen to me. I know. Believe I know. the B-Man next time. I think that's exactly what it was. I think we get a little nitrous kit for this one. They have these little sneaky peat bottles. It's about this big, about this big around. And add another 150 shot of uh, nitrous to this thing, it'll really make it. Dude, I, it sounds good to me. I'm up for pretty much anything. <laughs> fun day working on these little motors, though, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was fun having the kids out here today. You know, I, it's all about the payoff sometimes, right. you know? To have them coming in there. I, I saw them grab the roll cage yank it out of your hands yeah. and show you what to do oh, with it, it man. Perfect, man. And now look at them, they get to have some fun and enjoy this stuff. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, man. they've been pent up all day. They've been screaming for this. It's cool. The kids are out here. And it is. It's so much fun working with them. And like we said, there's a lot of things they can learn at this stage in the game that'll stay with them for the rest of their lives and really kind of help them know, even if they just know minimal things, it's such an improvement over knowing nothing at all. Well, right. I think an important lesson is that the stuff that we do with these little motors carries over to our big motors. Right. Just like you've got to maintain them, you've got to maintain these. And same thing goes for your, your you know, you've got generators, your little generators and power washers oh, yeah. and all that stuff. The same motors are actually in those that are in these carts. So a little bit of maintenance saves you a lot of money, a lot of time in the long run. All right, man. Sounds good. It's been a great day. It's really hot out here, so we're going to go inside and cool off. The kids aren't going to be happy about no, that, but no. they're going to have to deal with it. That's all the time we have. We'll see you next time right here on Truck U. See ya.